My second day in Petra, I managed to cover all the highlights, must see places in this wonderful site. I found the best spot to view the theater, climb to the royal tomb to see closely, found 450 years old of pistachio tree, climb over 800 steps to reach Adair monastery. Even I went further to the viewpoint and to another viewpoint, they said waterfall can be seen from here. So today's walk was almost 20 kilometers for go and back. Good morning, so today I will continue my exploration to Petra. This time I hiked through Unai Su Trail. The view of the street of Asad looks more interesting from here. Also, the theater looks more magnificent from here. Here, you can see the funerary architecture in details. From the Unai Su Trail, I keep walking further to the royal tombs. So the one over there is the royal tomb. This time I climb to the royal tombs to see closely. And I'm so amazed with the buildings and the architecture only for the tomb. Behind me is Un Tomb. I'm leaving the royal tombs and keep walking further to the Nimbayo. Now I'm walking to the Nimbayo. Nimbayo is the public fountain near the junction of Wadi Musa and Wadi Al Mutaba. It's very interesting because there is a wild pistachio tree that is 450 years old. So that is the pistachio tree, 450 years old. Here to do a little bit of rice, have snack and drink. I'm leaving pistachio tree and walking up to the Byzantine church. Inside there is the Byzantine church. Inside there you can find marble floor. It's very amazing. This church was built around at the end of the 5th century AD. This church is very well known with mosaic floors. Down there is colonnaded street. And now we are at the temple of the winged lions. So this is temple of winged lion. It was built between 25 AD. So over there is the great temple. And I'm going down to the colonnaded street to reach the great temple. So this is the great temple. This great temple complex represents one of the major archaeological and architectural monuments in central Petra. The columns have approximately 50 meters high. This is the great temple and it was constructed by the end of the 1st century BC by the Nabatean. It's estimated that it covers 7,000 meters square. I'm leaving the great temple and walking further to the Castra Alpin. It stands 23 meters high. At this junction, we have option to have a rise in here or keep walking further to the monastery, but I choose to climb to the museum. Mm -hmm. 
I can't find the museum. Instead, I find these fantastic views of this rock formation. I'm leaving this place to climb down and I found some restaurant. You don't need to worry if you get starving in Petra because there are restaurants in here. So This is also the last washroom before the monastery and I continue to walk further to climb through Adair Monastery Trail. This trail is quite challenging, narrow and steep and it's about 1.5 kilometers long to reach Adair Monastery. We need to climb over 800 steps to reach the monastery. A pair of hiking shoes and a good fitness level are required in here. Along the trail, you can find some souvenir shops. Also, the fantastic views of the rock formation. Going to the monastery, the way is up, up, up. So these are the Adair Monastery. The monastery dates to the early 2nd century AD. It was initially a royal mausoleum. It repurposed as a monastery during the Byzantine period. Adair Monastery, one of the largest monuments in Petra, with 47 meters wide and 48 meters high. From the Castle Alban to the Adair Monastery, the track is up, 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 up. I'm leaving the monastery and keep walking further. The monastery looks more magnificent from here. It says there's waterfall in here. Let's check. The best view of the world. That waterfall sign actually lead me to this cafe. I can't find the waterfall but I can hear sort of its sound. And this part of Petra looks more green. It makes sense if there is water in here. And I'm leaving this place to go back to go to another viewpoint. Best view from here. So let's check out. That sign is actually lead me to this cafe. It's really a good way to attract customers. Then I climb down, leaving this place, leaving the monastery, to go back to the entrance before it's dark because it's still 7 kilometers to reach the entrance. And I found the local Bedouin with camels and horses are blocking the narrow trail. And it's quite annoying as we need to extra careful to climb down. But they live in here so this is their place. I keep climbing down and still wondering how the local Bedouin can live in here as the water and the light may be limited. This thing make me feel so grateful. I may not have a lot but I have enough. In the dark I walk through the sick. Wadi Musa in the night looks so pretty. And I go back to the same restaurant and to my surprise I got free. 